what is the best lightweight concrete mix? Well, it really is going to depend on what are you using this concrete for. Lightweight concrete already is really only used for a handful of applications at best because it's really not strong enough for anything structural, so it's mostly just a decorative application. So what are you doing with this decorative concrete to determine what's going to be the best mix for it? And I've kind of designed a little experiment here that we can go through together and see if this helps to, to determine for you what you should be going after for your mix. So I guess first I'll explain a lightweight concrete mix is just a regular concrete mix where you take some of the heavy aggregates, which are gravel and sand, and you replace those with something much lighter. And what would you use to replace that with? Well, the first two things that I'm going to be thinking right away when you're talking about lightweight concrete mix mixes are perlite, which I believe is the lightest weight aggregate, if I'm correct on that. And the other is vermiculite. They're both very similar. In your hand, they would feel the same, and they both more or less look like polystyrene beads or just little bits of styrofoam. Um, you know, vermiculite is brown slash has a distinct gold fleck to it, so it kind of shimmers in the sun, and that's kind of your dead giveaway for what a vermiculite concrete might look like. Here's a, this is a four to one vermiculite concrete brick here, so this is just vermiculite and Portland cement, nothing other than that. And as you can see, it's not really finished properly or anything like that. This was just cast into a brick mold. Uh, but you can see it kind of has like a distinct little pattern in person you, or definitely in the sunlight. You can kind of see like some, some gold flecks in that. Whereas this is a perlite brick, same mix, uh, four, parts, um, four parts perlite to one part Portland cement. It doesn't really have that same, same look to it and certainly not in person. You can tell, tell them apart quite a bit. So they're actually fairly different as far as lightweight aggregates for concrete goes. And what it comes down to is vermiculite acts like a sponge, like literally like a sponge. If you put water into it, it just wants to drink that up. Perlite almost wants to repel the water. Like it doesn't really repel it, but kind of does. So they feel different on the trowel. They mix differently. It, it's just, it's a different application altogether. Further, the perlite is hard. Like it's, it's not, you can crush it, but it's, it's, it's hard where the vermiculite is spongy. It's soft and spongy. And that's kind of your big difference between the two is one of them is going to give you a softer, more spongy-like feeling with your finished product versus the other, which is hard. You know, it's still a lot, a lot weaker, a lot softer than regular concrete. Like not even really comparable basically is what it comes down to. And again, that's why we can't use any kind of lightweight concrete for structural building applications. It's just not strong enough for any of that. So let's look at some different mix options here to determine, you know, how much of these lightweight aggregates are you going to be using? You know, you, you could replace the sand and gravel completely with lightweight aggregates. That's what we've got here. You also could use some sand and just substitute some lightweight aggregates. The concrete's still going to be pretty darn heavy. Um, and you're going to lose a lot of the beneficial properties of something like a lightweight aggregate, which what would that be? Well, usually it's insulation value. Uh, you would use lightweight concrete like this and like, let's say you had a cinder block wall. If you filled those cinder blocks with vermiculite concrete, you're going to increase the, the thermal resistance of that wall by 10 X for sure. It makes a really big difference. And similarly, people do a lot of things, uh, you know, projects like pizza ovens or fire bricks, things like that out of lightweight concrete, you know, like with a perlite brick like this, you could have a torch on one side and your hand on the other, and, and you're not going to feel any heat from that. And that's, uh, that's really the benefits of it. So let's take a look at the different mixed strengths here to determine which one's going to be best for you. Now I, using uh, vermiculite and concrete, typically work with a, somewhere in this range of two to one to four to one, because that's what we've got here is one to one. So that's one part Portland cement to one part perlite, two parts perlite to one part cement, four parts perlite to one part cement. And then finally, eight parts per light to one part cement, just to give, give us an idea, like how strong is this stuff going to be? Is it going to be usefully strong at all? And I didn't think that the eight to one is going to demold. I thought the eight to one is going to break when I go to take it out of this mold here, despite how careful I'm going to be. Um, the four to one I've worked with before, that's what this is, four to one. It's, I could probably break this with my hands. I'd have to try a little bit with a hammer. Just take a little tap and it would break. It has no tensile strength at all. You know, that's where concrete's weak already. When you make it lightweight concrete, it's super, super weak. And I'll talk a little bit more about 
some things that you can do to lightweight concretes to try to make them a little bit stronger. Actually, let's just do it right now and get it out of the way. So you've got, uh, the, like, it's hard. Like, I could probably stand on these and it won't crush under my weight. I wouldn't park my car on it and then work under it because it probably will crush them. Uh, but, I mean, they feel pretty hard. Again, no tensile strength. It, it'll absorb some force, but a, like a sharp rap with a hammer, that's it. It's just going to crack immediately. And the way that you deal with that is adding something to the concrete mix that gives it more tensile strength. And the two primary ways are fiberglass. It doesn't look like that in the con like those will all separate individually. And it basically what it looks like, if you've ever seen a finished product of this fiberglass and concrete, the concrete just looks furry. When you come back the next day and it's like a sidewalk and you get right down and look at it, there's a bunch of fur on it. That's these and they add a lot of that strength work that I'm talking about where it would, instead of just cracking in half, now I have two pieces of concrete, it'll crack, but then the fibers engage. That's when the, the steel reinforcement or the fiber reinforcement really helps is once the cracking has happened, it starts to go, but then it can't because all of those are put under, under load and that's what helps to hold it together. Here's your other option, chopped glass fibers. Now these are, Chopped glass or stranded glass alkali resistant fibers is what you would typically search for if you're looking for something like this. And this is all specialty concrete application things. You're like, well, what would I use that? Which one should I use? It depends on what you're doing. Concrete is a very deep world. There's a lot of different things that you could be adding to this concrete depending on what you want it to do. But that's something that I would explore right there. If I'm trying to make some lightweight concrete, but I want to improve the physical properties of it, because honestly, lightweight concrete sucks. It's just so weak. It's hard to do anything useful with it. Adding glass fibers is something that you can do to help kind of increase its strength in the way that it's the weakest. Um, so fiberglass, chalk glass fibers, that's the way that I'm going to improve the strength if I'm looking to improve the tensile strength. Here's another tip that I recommend. When I'm making something like this, what I find is very helpful to use is a product like this. This one's called uh, bonding adhesive. The other one that I use is called weld bond. Listen to it. It's super thick, right? It's just a, it's a really thick white liquid, modified PVA, polyvinyl acetate, white glue. That's what you know it as. Uh, you open the bottle, smell it, that's white glue. You know that right away. So this stuff is modified a little bit. And when I say that, what I'm talking about is its resistance to water. Once it dries, now you've got hard glue. You've used it, it's hard. If you add water to that, is it going to re-emulsify? Because if it does, that takes away a lot of that usefulness for the product. So something like these products here have been modified for this specific application. I wouldn't go and use them underwater necessarily. There's other products that you would use for that depending on your application. Remember, the world of concrete is very, very deep. But in this application here, there's barely any Portland cement to hold this stuff together by the time I'm getting into four to one or eight to one or higher than that. And so modified PVA or glue in my concrete mix, well, that's gonna do exactly what I want. It's gonna kind of just help to bind and hold and make everything stick together. And, even in a regular concrete mix, you can get some benefits from adding some modified PVA. If I were trying to make lightweight concrete the best that I could, the strongest that I could, then I would be looking up towards this four to one, eight to one range. I'm gonna be looking at either fiberglass or chopped glass fibers, and I'm gonna be adding PVA to the mix, approximately 10% by liquid volume. However much liquid my concrete it needs, 10% of that liquid instead of water is gonna be modified PVA. So that just gives you an idea what you're doing with this stuff is you add this glue to your water, mix it all together, and then use that water to make your concrete. And then in the final product, when it all gets hard, in addition to being concrete and being hard, it's also all glued together. So it's just really beneficial across the board. Now, what I'm worried about is with an eight to one mix, like, sure, it's hard as I poke it, but if I go to take it out and it's just crumbling in your hands, it's, that's not useful. I thought four to one would have been the strongest that I would have been comfortable going with for, you know, a fire brick or anything along those lines. But uh, this eight to one feels kind of impressive there. And I'm wondering if actually it's gonna be okay. So we'll see.
this one-to-one -one that I'm going to start with down here, it, it basically feels like regular concrete, right? Like it's hard, not even damaging it. You know, I could go out to the sidewalk in front of my home and stab it with a screwdriver and you're hardly even going to be able to make a dent at all. Well, this feels hard. If I really started to stab at this, it, it's not hard. It's not like regular concrete. There's, it's only Portland cement in Portland. And remember, that's one to one ratio. So one shovel full of, of Portland cement, one shovel full of perlite. And the end result is that there's too much Portland cement. Like there's a, there's a reason why we don't just use Portland cement. We use Portland cement as the glue or binder, and then we have to have something really hard to glue together, which is your sand and gravel, or in this case, your lightweight aggregates. It's too much, and I, I can't see very many applications where a one-to-one -one is going to be useful for you in terms of, like it's gonna be expensive, first of all, because your Portland cement's really expensive. Uh, it's not as strong as it could be if you just use some aggregates in it. Let's see how it comes up here. can't see the uh, the perlite at all but that's because it was sitting on plastic when you pour concrete on plastic it, it makes it very smooth like you can probably tell not as much as I can but even just from the picture here it's ex incredibly smooth because it was poured on top of uh, plastic but it's just not I could tell like if again same thing if I just had a hammer and I gave it a tap, I'm pretty sure one or two taps and this thing's going to break in half because there's no fibers, there's nothing in this. This is just one part Portland cement type GU, type general use Portland cement and perlite, one, one to one by volume. Let's take a look here just for comparison. I'd like to know how much this thing weighs. 1,516 grams or 1 1.5 kilograms for that guy there. It was kind of set that aside but compare that to this uh, this next one here oh wow it's much lighter right away much lighter so you can start to see some honeycombing there and that's just because there's simply just not enough Portland cement to span the gaps here but at a two to one mix it's really well actually I guess I should weigh it before I accidentally break them 838 grams so we're under we're under a kilogram here that's really impressive and it feels usefully strong like this is very thin I'm five eighths of an inch three quarters of an inch barely and yeah it's actually surprisingly strong Let's keep on rolling here Again, four to one. Now, this is something that I'm more familiar with. I've, I've used four to one for a lot of different applications. Take a look at that honeycombing on the back. Actually, kind of cool looking. I've seen a, a neat technique before where you do something like this, and then you flip it over and you come through and you do a second application of a different color, like let's say some black concrete or some really brightly colored concrete, and you fill all those voids, and then when you kind of finish and sand, and then it's a step sanding process to make it super smooth, but then you have you can see what the coloration difference would be. Like one, one is already there, but then all of the voids would get filled in it. There's so many cool things you can do with concrete. That's why I have a big studio here for working with it because it's, it's a lot of fun. 589 grams. Surprisingly light, 589. Okay, so I didn't think this one was gonna come out of the mold here. That was my prediction is that eight to one, like there was so little Portland cement in there. I could barely get the perlite even just covered in Portland cement. So no water or anything. Just put them dry in a bucket and just swirl them around until the perlite stops being white and starts being gray. And again, there's so little Portland cement to go around. I didn't think that the, there would even be enough, but it seems pretty good here. That's <laughs> so light. Let's take a look first in case I break it. Hey, this is crazy light. It feels like a sponge. 491. 491. That's pretty good. 
It's like a pound. So I want to break this just so that you can see how easily it breaks. I, I think that'll be useful information for you as much as I kind of like this and I don't want to break it. I think I will because I, I do want to try to provide you with some sort of takeaway here and not having the tactile response and being able to hold it in your hands. It's very hard for you to infer some useful information here. So just kind of as an example, first of all, I'll let you know that this guy is about a week old, so it's not fully, fully cured strength yet, but I'm, you know, three quarters of the way there in terms of strength. So this is sufficiently strong is what I'm trying to say. If I were doing mold castings or anything like that with a traditional concrete mix that was more reliable, I wouldn't have any problems here, but honestly, that even looked like I put more force than I did. I really just kind of got started and she gave away right away. There's just not a lot here. So again, that, that kind of failure right there, that's going to be the kind of thing that some chalk glass fibers and some fiberglass, maybe some PVA in the mix would help you with. Cause this is nothing except Portland cement and perlite, but man, that is just super weak. All right. Breaking my heart here, but let's break some more stuff here. Okay. So same thing here, except this is my four to one brick. It already def definitely took more force. The last one gave as soon as I pressed twice as strong. Like I, if I had to put a number to it, that's what I'm saying is that this was twice as strong. I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to break up all the rest of my stuff because I want some samples for painting and things like that later. But I think you can see why it is you don't build your house or your, your home foundation for your home out of four to one per light concrete. So the best lightweight concrete mix is really going to come down to your application. What are you doing with it? You know, there's things that you can do, but if, you know, if I'm going to build a pizza oven, I'm going to cook my food in there. I'm probably not adding a lot of, you know, chemical additives to my concrete. I'm probably going with just like you saw here, something along the lines of just perlite and just cement or just vermiculite and just cement, depending on your application. But uh, do be careful with your ratios because you give up a lot of strength when you start looking towards these lightweight concrete recipes. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.